Hola guys, welcome to my channel and in this video I'd be ranting more about the memory upgrade I did with my, with my Synology NAS, the DS220 Plus. I installed a 4GB uh, single rank by 8 configuration memory, 2666MHz. Now the reason I chose this as I've mentioned in my previous video is uh, I wanted to stick as close to what's being supported by the system and or the CPU. Now if you guys could uh, check or as you guys may know the the processor the ds220 plus has is a j4025 you know what let me just minimize my my face here real quick uh there you go and the the processor it's using is a j4025 uh celerin uh dual core uh, we know that and as for the memory the total the maximum memory size that's being supported is 8 gigabytes. Now, as you guys may know, the DS220 Plus comes with a 2 gigabyte pre-soldered uh, soldered, uh, memory. into It's soldered into the board, right? It's pre-installed. So, we don't have a 6 gigabyte SODIM. Well, not that I'm aware of. So, the next best... The next... Huh, excuse me. The next best thing's the 4 gigabyte, right? So, yeah. The total capacity I have is 6 gigabytes, so that's that. And total memory channels too. As for the rank, uh, the, the reason I chose a single rank is, well, it's 2 gigabytes pre-installed into the board. Most probably it's single rank. So it doesn't really make much sense if I put in a dual rank memory into that thing. Now, the reason I mentioned that is... I'm not really getting good experience with a quad rank in regards to overclocking memory in my desktop, all right? Now, uh, much more with a triple rank. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is uh, I, I want to make sure I want to operate each channel because most probably the, the processor is supporting dual channel, right? The first channel has a single rank 2 gigabytes. So the second channel, the second channel, I wanted to have only a single rank in there as to not confuse the controller, something like that. I hope I make sense to someone there. And that's the reason for the single rank. Now, if your NAS comes with, uh, if the memory is not soldered into the board, you actually have two physical slots for your SODIMs. Uh, and the first RAM, is dual rank it'll be a good idea to to install a dual rank uh additional ram in there as well uh yeah so um all right uh all i'm saying is uh me personally i'm not i don't have that much uh good experience with triple ranks uh me i just end up using triple ranks uh triple rank configuration in my system if if for some reason i don't have a spare ram available something like that uh yeah so right now i'm working off with dual channel single rank per channel configuration and total capacity of six gigabytes and as for the 2666 megahertz i got this off of uh 220 plus's specs here at the bottom here it's shown here uh optional accessories ddr4 non-ecc sodim uh, 2666, uh, 4 gigabytes. So as I've mentioned, I want to stick as close as possible to what's being supported. Uh, well, uh, as close as possible since I'm using a third party, uh, memory module. Yeah. And all right. In my previous video, what I failed to show you guys is, uh, me conducting a memory test on the, uh, on the, on the memory I installed or onto the system. And I installed the memory two weeks ago. Oops, not that one. Here. Uh, I installed it two weeks ago about January 15. Well, not about. Uh, uh, last January 15. And if you install a third-party memory module, you get this uh, notification here uh, that it's being detected that it's a third-party module. So since that time up until now, I'm no problems whatsoever, problem free. But do note that I actually just use my NAS for external or network storage, you know, to save my videos to. 
and as a media server to run Plex for my me as my media server, and that's about it. But let me tell you guys, with the uh, with the additional memory I installed, you can really notice the improvement it, it gave this one here. Uh, it, it was really nice because, as you may know, if you guys could check here in your resource monitor, the memory or the DS220 Plus actually uses the RAM as for caching. So as you guys know, again, uh, caching uh, could really help speed things up in, in your system's you know performance. So yeah, um, I, I average cache last time. Uh, actually, this is the second take of this video here. Uh, on the first video, I was I, I forgot to minimize or to to make my face smaller, uh, blocking the whole screen. Uh, at that time, it was around 800, 900 uh, megabytes of cache, but now it's 522. And as you guys may see, I only have 139 megabytes free, but the 4.3 gigabytes being used as buffer, but so uh, I pretty much consider that as free if you know what is if you know what I mean. Uh, well, here's the memory uh, resource monitor there. So as I've mentioned, uh, I forgot to perform a memory test in my previous video, so that's what I'd want to show you guys. Um, if you have any knowledge in regards to memory testing, it'll take a while. And uh, yeah, uh, how to do it? First off, you need to go to Synology uh, website and download Synology Assistant. You could go to Support, Download Center, click on that, click on NAS. Uh, choose the model of your NAS. In my case, it's 220 plus. Go to make sure the OS version's right. And desktop utilities, Synology Assistant, click on download. Download and install it. Now, uh, during installation, Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Defender will prompt you uh, asking if you'd allow access to this app. Uh, please don't fail to click on allow for this one, for that one there. Uh, if if you miss that or if you close that by mistake, you won't be able to, or the the Synology assistant won't be able to recognize your NAS uh, that that's uh, in your network. So click on allow for that. After installation, of course, launch it. There you go. And after launching it, uh, your NAS should be appearing there. If it's not, click on search. And it should appear. If nothing's found, you most probably you missed the firewall notification. Uh, you could try. Uh, there will be some hints. Uh, Synology will make. Uh, there will be a pop-up window there, uh, advising you to turn off your firewall temporarily. You could turn off your firewall, uh, perform a search, and re-enable firewall, and the notification will. Uh, Reemerge, so click on allow this time, right? And anyway, uh, your NAS should be recognized by then. And yeah, so your NAS is here. Click on settings and enable advanced services memory test in particular. Uh, put a check on that one. Click on OK and click on your NAS. Click on memory test. I don't want to click on memory test because if I do, it'll perform the memory test, and I don't want to, you know. Uh, disturb it during uh, you know during the testing so after clicking on the memory test there will be a progress bar uh, do note that that progress bar is in regards to the system preparing for the test all right it's not the memory test itself yet it's just preparing the system for the test and after initialization uh, after clicking on after clicking on uh, finish, it'll reboot the system and then it'll perform the memory test. As for the memory test, uh, I wasn't able to make a video out of it uh, because I only have six gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I didn't expect it to take that long. Uh, what I had in mind was I'd perform I'd be performing the test and then later on. During making during the making of this video, I'd be running the test in real time, but it really does take a while, guys. So really, a lot some time for this one. And anyway, this is what 
it'll look like after it rebooted after it reboots uh the status here will say performing memory test zero percent in my case it stayed in zero percent for about 15 minutes 10 15 minutes some something like that and it jumped to 4.97 oh you know what i started 11.49 so no 10 minutes uh it stayed in zero percent for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes 4.97 percent so it really does take time guys uh it may seem like your system's uh hung uh, or it's hanging something like that but it really just takes some time uh otherwise if if it fails it'll still finish uh we could we'd be able to find out and pull out the results if it uh you know if uh there was some error during the testing later on all right uh when we pull up the log file so all i'm saying is for this test here it actually finished i received an email at around two uh, around two o'clock something like that prompting me that my nas is connected back to the network uh i didn't receive any email saying that the memory test is complete I received an email that my NAS is connected back to the network, all right? So uh, I actually left the computer alone. When I got back, uh, just about now, uh, when I got back, uh, I checked on the status real quick and it just said, it just said this, uh, Chris NAS status ready. That's it. No other messages, no other prompts, no other notifications, uh, just ready, all right? When I went back to my Synology, uh, I checked on my notifications, uh, nothing. Um, if you click on the apps here, log center, um, click on OK. No logs in regards to memory test, all right? How will you be able to pull up the log or the test results uh, first? um what do you have to do yeah so click on the application here in the menu and click on support center click on support center wait for it to load and support services scroll down log generation just put a check on performance that's it click on performance Generate logs. Now, this will take a while. Let's just wait for it to download, all right? All right. So, it's finished downloading. Now, just open the folder. It's uh, downloaded in. Show in folder there. And... Now, let's create a folder first. Uh, new folder. Let's uh, name it test. All right. And just move it there extract the file now if you have a 7-zip file or 7-zip application uh, it'll make it easier for you to extract this if you don't simply hit f2 and rename it rename it to a zip file if you have a windows 11 or 10 this should work if it doesn't well you'd have to download 7-zip file off of uh, microsoft store and do you want to change it yes so it's there we have to extract it i will extract extract i will extract it right into the test folder we did we created and extract There you go. So it's there now. Now you'd want to open DSM and scroll down to package status list. What you do need to have installed into your computer is Notepad++. A regular Notepad won't uh, really work. You'd have to have Notepad++. All right. You can download it off uh, Microsoft Store. Notepad++. Oh, let me show you. Uh, well, here. And Notepad++, which one did I choose? It's this one here, the unofficial one, the free version. 
And I installed this one here. You guys could see it's already installed. Oh, weird. Anyway, uh, this is the one I installed. Uh, I remember because of the name here. And yeah, just install that and it should work fine. And so, open Notepad++ and open the file. Uh, this PC, downloads, test, DSM, package status list. There you go. Now, uh, press Control A to select all of it and click on search here on the, uh, up top here and search and find in files. And here in find what, type in memtest. There you go. In filters, asterisk dot asterisk. And in the directory, make sure you have uh, the DSM folder, all right? Click on the three dots there. This PC, downloads, the test folder where we extracted the file to. Choose DSM, all right? Choose DSM, click on OK. Memtest, asterisk, test DSM. Uh, seems okay. Find all. Shouldn't take long. And here at the bottom, you should have multiple hits. And there you go. Here at the bottom, I have six results or six hits. All of them passed. So that's a good sign. Uh, if any errors, if there's only like, if one of them says an error, you have a problem. Uh, if like one out of five, but one's failed, five uh, was successful or passed, you still have a problem, all right? Uh, it should be all passed, not just four, not just three, not just five. All of them should have uh, an indication that it passed, all of them. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, disclaimer, guys, uh, before... I really hope you guys know what you're doing when you're performing this upgrade here. Uh, do note that Synology has a disclaimer that a uh, third-party module, uh, a third-party module, could actually damage your your you know your NAS. But me, in my case, uh, I I really believe that closing as much as possible to you know to what's being supported should save me somehow. Maybe I don't know. But yeah, uh, I didn't want to risk it. This one is really cheap. This party, this particular model, and or version, whatever. Uh, it it costed me around a thousand pesos, so not bad. Uh, yeah, that that's about it. Uh, I I I hope I was able to help some of you guys out. Um, make sure, make sure you're able to make a backup of all your files or. or Make a backup of your files in your storage or your RAIDs properly set up before actually installing the module, all right? And yeah, that's about it. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video or again, I was able to help someone out. I hope if you liked it, hit on like, subscribe if you wanna. As always, see you in the next one.